hello everyone welcome to the part one of our phaser game development tutorial in this video we are diving into phaser.js a powerful game framework for building fun and interactive 2d games using javascript if you want to know more about the phaser so you can go to the phaser.io and here you will you can get you can go to the getting started and from here you can get the document making your first game from here you can go to the examples and here you can get the actions of all the actions and you can see the codes today we'll be setting up our game scene adding a scrolling background and bringing in our animated bird to flap its wing so you can see uh, so the first part we are going to build so i already deployed in the virtual and i will provide the link uh, this link so that you can also see and here you will get my youtube channel link please go to my channel and subscribe and press the bell notification so that you never miss any video uploaded in this phaser game development tutorial playlist so by the end of this part you will have a basic moving background and flying bird animation so let's jump right in and start coding so i will go to the directory where i am going to create this game project so here i will open the terminal and for this project i will use the byte so byte is a fast and modern build tool for web application so the command to initialize a new project using byte is the npm create byte at the rate latest here we have to put name so i will put the name phasard game one and here i i will use the vanilla javascript and here i will use the javascript we initialized a new project using white so basically the white is known for its uh, fast development server and optimized build process making it a popular choice for modern web development so i'll go to the phaser game one and i'll open it in my visual studio code command is the code dot you can see it's cap folded a right project so where we have this public directory src directory we have the main.js index and package.json so after uh, going to the directory we have to install the dependency so i will install the dependency first npm install will install the dependency which is white so dependency installed now i will run the command npm run dev and you can see uh, it's compiled and we can see the compiled version in our browser so we have this the we have the wide icon javascript here we have the counter you can click on it so first i will clean the unnecessary i will clean the project so i will remove all the unnecessary files here so first uh in the index.html we don't know we have to change the title white app instead of the phasard game one and next i will change i'll remove this tip id we don't need it and next i'll go to main.js here we don't need anything just i will keep the style.css and next i will go to the javascript svg we don't need i will delete it counter.js i will delete and byte.svg i will delete next we have to install the uh, phaser so the command is the npm i phaser 
so phaser is phaser library successfully installed in our project directory next i will import this phaser library so import phaser from phaser next i will define the code configuration of the phaser again first is the type phaser auto this property tells the phaser to automatically choose the best rendering method available it will prioritize the webgl for better performance and fallback to canvas if webgl is not supported by the user's uh, browser next i will define the width and next height and next physics i don't need right now but i need the scene S-C-E-N-E -E scene and scene will have the preload create and also update so scene is basically the uh, object that specifies the life cycle methods for the game scene preload a function where the assets that is the image sounds are loaded before the game starts create a functions where the game world is initialized such as the adding sprite and setting up the scenes update a function it's called repeatedly typically 60 times per seconds to handle game logic and animation interaction we'll see those things the preload create and update in actions just right now first we have to pass this config object uh, to the phaser.game constructor to initialize the game next we'll work on the function preload so first i will load so i'll load the background image the preload function basically ensures that these images are available for use in the games before any game scenes or logic are executed so here i will load the image not the logo here i will name it the background as the key and the asset here i will have the background background.png so the assets you have to download first before start the game so you will get the asset from google so if you search with the flappy part asset so you will get it from the itch.io or the github or the godot engine so i already downloaded and i have this assets here so i will take the background night and i will place it in my asset directory so i have the public and here i will create the assets directory and here i will put the background and i will change it the name to background.png and now i will go here and here we have this assets let me check the path the assets and the background.png Now if I want to set up the game scene then I can uh, go to the create and the add the image the create background it will create it will render the background so let me open the developer console and here we have this error message that the update is still not defined here we uh, uh, here we put the update but it's not defined yet so let's define and here if i save it and you can see uh, the background png it's rendered here in the local 5173 now the next thing i will do i will load the bard image so i'll pick one of the bard image like the red bard and i will put in the asset directory here red part down flap and i will go here and i will load the image same way i will name it the part one and the asset will be red part down flap
it's loaded and if i want to add it here so here you can see it's appeared the part is also appeared next i want to add the scrolling background for this i will add the tile sprite so here this dot add dot tile sprite to the background so here you can see it's reflected but i i want to move the background horizontally to create a scrolling effect so i will take let background and here i will take this background and in the update i will increase the tile position x is a special type of sprite that can repeat itself seamlessly which is useful for creating scrolling or tiled backgrounds and as the update function called repeatedly here i am increasing the tile position i can uh, change this value to slow down it to 0 0.5 by this way i can adjust the speed so if you see here the background image it's not matching with the game's dimensions to fix it so i will so i will position the background at the top light corner so i will place the x y 0 0 and next the hide width i will take it from the game config hide width so that it matches the game's dimension so here i will take it on the game dot config dot width and next the game dot config dot height here you can see the original image is smaller than the game canvas so we have to scale it uh, to fit it to the game canvas so we can use the set scale method here so i will scale the background so background dot set scale so background dot set scale to scale the background by two factor still not working so i will scale it to three now it's fine looks fine and next i want to add the part in the middle of our game canvas so i can make the game dot config dot width by two and similarly game dot config dot height by two so it will appear in the middle so if i enlarge it you can see next i will add the flying part animation so that the part can flap its wings so for this for this if you see i have the three image down flap mid flap and the up flap so i'll copy the mid flap and the up flap and i will paste in our asset directory and in our code i'll take this mid flap and the up flap so here mid flap and the up flap and i will name it bar 2 and the bar 3 next i will take the variable bar frame let bar frame zero the current frame of the part and 
I will take the heading of the word frames let word frames but one of the frames of the board next I will take the variable part let part and I will assign this part to this variable and next I will animate the part by cycling through the frames so animate the part by changing the frames so here I will change the bot frame bot frame plus equal to 0 0.1 and this is the increase the frame counter so we can uh, increase the value to increase this frame next I will check if the part frames is frame greater than length then i will reset it to the zero so it basically checks uh, if the part frame exceeds the numbers of the available frames it will be reset to zero ensures the animation loops continuously and next i will change the part frames so you can see uh, the part flipping its wings so change the i am changing the bot frames so if i increase this so the flipping speed will increase and if i make it 0 0.5 so you can see it's changing and if i make it so it will be really slow make it 0 0.1 next thing we can turn like the make the bot fly up and down so for this uh, instead of the image i have to take the sprite so this dot at dot sprite so for the bot direction i will take the variable like the let bot direction and one one for the up and minus one for the down and next i will go to the update function here and here i will put the comment like make the bot move up and down so here so here i want to adjust the speed of the movement so i will adjust the speed by one and next i'll check the bar bar y position you can see it's falling so i have to check the bar's y position so if the bar y greater than equal to game config height then i have to move it to the down and if is less than equal to zero then i have to move it to the up instead of this we can reverse the direction by this way we'll check the part y greater than equal to 350 or less than equal to 250 then we'll reverse the direction so it will up and down you can see so that's it for part one of our facer game tutorial we have successfully set up our game scenes added a scrolling backgrounds and animated our part but this is just the beginning in the next part we will add player controls obstacles and more interactive gameplay so stay tuned if you found this tutorial helpful hit the like button subscribe and turn on notification so you don't miss the next part let me know in the comments if you have any questions or ideas for this game so happy coding